Welcome to another edition of the Metal Boys! The Metal Boys! Metal Boys! You know why we were trying to sing loud and high like that, which we, we, we can at our age. No, we cannot. We used to be able to, yeah. with a pair of pliers especially. Yes. Because with the success we had with our Clockwork Angels review, yes. we decided to go back and review the first five Rush albums. We had so many comments, Alan, all these guys writing comments saying, this is my favorite album. No, this is my favorite album. 3D. This is my favorite album. So I figured, you know what, let's just go back to the back catalog, do five of the first ah. albums of Rush, the and we'll continue. The first bookend. The bookend. The first chapters. The chapters. Of the Rush origins. Yes. Here we let's go. start off with... Start off with number one. With Rush. Rush. Hey, Rush. coming Rush. at you. Working man. Finding my way. In the mood. In the mood. Yes. Very straightforward, hard rock sound. You can see the Led Zeppelin cream Who influences on there. Yes. In fact, uh, like you said, uh, it started off in Cleveland. Was a uh, you know working out of the Midwest. They always loved these types of bands. You know, a, Kiss, a Bob Seger, town. a factory town. You know, and uh, they put it on, and people are calling the radio station, going, "Hey, what's that new Led Zeppelin track about?" Hey, what's that? So that shows you the influence as well. And Getty's voice was was up there. Yes. And it was John Rutsey on drums, who yes. a much more straightforward rock and roll to four four beat. Yeah. Uh, great drummer too. Yeah. Unfortunately, great. couldn't because of his diabetes couldn't uh, continue uh, with the touring aspect. And uh, I think they wanted to go on a much more progressive uh, yes. avenue. He wanted to stay more to the solid uh, rock and roll, uh, hard rock yeah. avenue, and that's where. Well, well, I mean, Working Man. I mean. Here you go, an amazing track. You cannot, out of all the Rush songs out there, I mean, I'm talking about their whole catalog, that's got to be one of the greatest songs they've ever written. And it was written back in 1974. What a riff. What what a a riff. riff. You can't forget the little bass line, and then the drums come in, and the guitar solos. It's an amazing track, and you could still hear it in movies today. Yeah. And actually, hockey games. Canada's Rush first became popular in the U.S. and not even in Canada. Yeah, in but Canada, they wouldn't even happened play this to a thing. lot of bands. Yeah. DTO, the same thing, the Guess Who. Yeah. That's... That's our Canada story. That's right. Next, next album. Next so, album. Neil Peart. It's the beginning of the Neil Peart era. So, at a St. Catharines, Ontario, they Farming find his community. drummer. He he actually gets on the tour with just the before. band just before Fly By Night. Yeah. So here he is. They uh, they go on tour. They come back and they start a, a studio album called Fly By Night. There you go. Fly By Night. It's a good show album. Fly By Night. There you go. I showed it night. five times. Fly here, By three, Night. Here's a three D version. Fly By Night. Uh, here you have, it's a transitional album, and, um, you have hard rock songs, and now you're seeing their progressive side start to creep in. A little more uh, more intelligent lyrics are coming in from Neil Peart. They're going, hey, look, this guy, this guy can read. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we should get this guy to start writing this guy's some lyrics for us. lyrics actually make sense. <laughs> That's, That's right. something that Getty and Alex weren't particularly no. strong. They focused on the music. So Hence, best thing. I can. There you go. <laughs> but then you have Bytor and the Snow Dog. Right. The first real epic song by Rush. Basically, it, the inspiration from all this was their manager had a Terry big Brown? dog and a no, no, their no, manager. No, the manager. It yeah. was a Daniels, I believe. Yes, yeah, Ray Daniels. He, he had uh, the the big dog and the little dog, and they were fighting, and they, that was the inspiration for it all. We'll have Bytor as the Prince of Darkness, and the little dog as Snow Dog, the uh, our hero in all of this, and he hence comes the song Bytor and the Snow Dog. Go. Very epic. I don't know what they were smoking at that point, but it was fairly fairly good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another great song is Anthem, inspired yes. by Anne Rand's book called Anthem. There you go. And After then that, the controversial third album. Caress. Caress. Of Steel. Of Steel. Steel. Where you've got Bastille Day and I think I'm going bald. Lakeside Park, which Willow's that, in the they, breeze. they still don't like that album song. Neil Peart's <laughs> thinks it's one of his worst lyrics ever. Terrible lyrics. Goes back to his uh, childhood uh, working at the local Carney once, yes. uh, once a year. But then comes the uh, mini epics. The Necromancer. And the Fountain of Lamneth. Necromancer, just so everybody understands. 13 minutes and 20 minutes each. Oh, the record crazy. company's pulling their hair out. What the hell are you doing here? What, what are you doing, doing here? The story by Tor, the Sno by Tor, the by Tor, by Tor, by Tor, and the by Snow Dog. Actually, three fellow travelers from Willowdale, Rush, uh, they go on this journey where they meet, they get put in some sort of dungeon. Uh, the story is a uh, token inspired, right? Token right, inspired. I would think so, yeah. Uh, these three travelers get stuck in some sort of dungeon. Bytor, the hero, uh, fights against the necromancer, and uh, I'm assuming he kills him or some sort of thing like that. It's a little unclear. Unclear, yes. Fountain of Lamneth. But without that album, and the record comes honestly. The Fountain of Lamneth. It's, well, it's basically the concept is from birth, the journey of life. Basically, your birth to your teenage years to adult years to your old age to death. So it, they talk very now, loosely all, about all that. All within 20 minutes. All within 20 minutes. You have it all. 
Uh, the record company was literally oh pulling their God. hair out. This was the beginning of the end. What do yes. we do with this? How do we market this? Uh, here in North America, I, for me, I think it's it's probably the weakest of the catalog. But you were saying... You know what? When I was a young lad going into Europe, uh, especially in Greece, I noticed that there was so many Caressa Steel albums all around me. Everywhere I'd go, I'd see a guy with record collection. And the one record that I've always seen is Caressa Steel. So it was very popular, maybe because of Bastille Day, very European flavor, French Revolution. Uh, they seemed to love it there. They were more... Uh, prog rock in Europe, whereas in North America we considered it a there disaster. Yeah, prog rock. Being but I liked it. I, I, I think it's uh, one of my favorite Rush albums. Not in my top ten, but up there. Well, for me, it's a very transitional album because without Caress of yes. Steel, you would never have had 21, 21 12, 12, their landmark album. The Red, uh, the Red Planet of the Solar Federation. What is it? I don't know. I don't know. The Red Star, the Red Star of the Solar Federation. All I know is uh, they said if we're going out because we're not getting support for the record company, we've got all this pressure to write another hit or uh, or have a hit. And they said if we're going out, we're going out on our shield and we're gonna we're gonna do it the way we want to do it. And they they threw caution to the wind and they did their most progressive album uh, with the uh, you know with the whole first album totaling twenty the first side twenty minutes just yes. one song. Uh, of course, the 2112 Overture. Yeah. And uh, the record company again is saying, oh my gosh, here we go, what do we oh do? And God. they said, we're going to do what we want. And what do you know? It's the album that launched their yeah. career. And that kind of bookends that first chapter. 2112, the story career. of a dystopian society uh, where individual uh, thought is not allowed. And then this, this, this man discovers this relic of a guitar he learns how to play it and he shows it to the priest he goes hey priest look what i found what the I the found this guitar. Siri. he goes tell look what i found i can play this it's 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 it's, it's music magical. it's magical and the priest said no man no man you can't have this can't have this, is the, this is the red plan of the solar federation man he goes but i want to play it i want to play it and then the man goes you know what uh, uh, i'm gonna uh, kill myself and then he kills himself at the end of the story and uh we have assumed control 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 that means that the planets have actually, this dystopian society has failed, no more Big Brother, and everybody's free. How's that? That's a nice summary, Jeff. William Shakespeare. There you go. William Shakespeare. And Next then? Album. Live. Bookmark. Live. All the world's All the stage. world's stage. That's it. Like Ted Rush tends to do when they go on to a new chapter in their career or new musical leanings, they bookend it with a live album. Yes. And this was the live double live album. Yes. That uh, summed up these first four studio albums quite nicely. A yeah. great live album. I love it. It's great. Getty's voice is the highest I think it's ever yeah. been. Uh, the screech. Yes. That he keeps in a box nowadays. Yes. But he can still pull it out on occasion. If you love those first four albums, you're gonna love all. That's the a great. It's stage. a great live album, and one of my favorites. And that led on to their next phase of their career, Jim, which to be continued. we'll do perhaps to be continued. on a future episode. Yes, we'll do. So if you like this, what's your favorite Rush album in, the, in, in their catalog, or the first four, we could say, or first five? Whatever you want sure. to say, basically. Okay, write in whatever you want. Clockwork Angels, how do you like it so far? It's growing on me. I think you, you found a ma major improvement since we did the show. I think okay. it started really growing on you. Yes, I'm at from 8.7. I'm hovering around 9.3 right now. 9.3. I love it. It's gone up. I'm getting into all the songs. An hour ago is 9.2. It's already at 9.3. Yes. So in two hours from now, we'll it'll check be in, in two hours and we'll be at 10. Yes. There you go. See you next time on The Metal Voice. The Metal Voice.